Hey friends, it's Gloria and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about 10 books that I'm calling books in purgatory. And what I mean by that is that these books I have hauled for various reasons, usually little free libraries because I am not so attached to them or they have just been on my shelves for way too long. And since hauling them, I've had no desire to read them and pick them up, but at the same time, don't want to get rid of them. So they're somewhere in between. They're in purgatory. They're neither here or there. I'm not drawn to them, but I, for some reason, am attached to not give them away. And I really have no problem purging books. I have a bag in my car of books to give away in little free libraries. And all of these have been in that bag. And every single time I reach for it to put it in a little free library, I put it down and I pick up another book and put it away instead. So all that to say, these are books that are in purgatory for me. I can get rid of them if I'm convinced. And I can also still be convinced to read them and give them a try. So that is the purpose of this video. I love receiving comments to my videos and having a conversation down below and in this one especially. Please leave a comment if you have read any of these or if you've tried to read them, if you've liked or disliked. I really need to be persuaded to either keep the book and really give it a go or pass it along because it didn't really work for you either and if you know anything about my book taste maybe they won't work for me either what spawned this idea is in my last book haul i mentioned this book when we left cuba by chanel clean and this was the book that i called a book in purgatory and even in that book haul many of you said that you enjoy the series but next year in havana was easily the most favorite and the other ones were fine and then a few of you said that it wasn't really worth reading and it was just your mediocre historical fiction and i'm still not convinced i still don't know whether to keep it and give it a try or pass it along i think for sure i would try next year in havana first before trying this one which means i kind of want to get rid of it because this is like book four or something so it would take me a while to even get to this one so this is the book that i'm not sure about it's historical fiction it's set in cuba 1960s fidel castro the cia's involved cuban american politics it all sounds interesting on the back but for some reason like i said this cover doesn't really convey that message that the back does book number two another historical fiction that i've probably had for over 10 years and that is the piano teacher by janice yk lee this one i bought forever ago as a teenager in costco because i think i was like that looks pretty and it is a it kind of a pretty cover and it is a historical fiction and it is set in 1942 in Hong Kong and I would love to read a historical fiction that has to do with that time period and set in China but the heart of the story is that it is about a passionate affair and I really don't like reading about affairs it's like my anti buzzword or whatever if a book is about an affair or like a tumultuous marriage or cheating or infidel ugh, I just don't I don't want to read about it it's all icky I know it happens but I don't want to read about it so if you've read this book does it have that? Is that the focus of the story? Is it redemptive and compelling or is it just icky? Another book that I really have not made up my mind about is The Sympathizer by Viet Thanh Nguyen. So this one I found in a little free library and I've seen it around. It is a winner of the Pulitzer Prize. It has a Carnegie Medal so it has been quite reviewed. If I'm honest, I'm not really drawn to books that are in the awards like the women's prize for fiction or the booker prize because usually those are literary fiction and if you know me i don't really love literary fiction so i think this is a literary fiction like spy sort of situation it has to do with vietnam and communism coming to america after the fall of saigon there's some interesting things in there but for some reason i just have not been wanting to pick this book up and it's a chunker and i've heard several people say that it just didn't work for them one that i just every single time i look at i get so nervous to pick up because i'm just like oh i don't know if i'm gonna like it or not i think the people that love it love it and the people that really don't don't and that is americana by chimamanda ngozi adichie this is also a very like popular book and this author writes really well i read her short essay on feminism and that was really interesting but this one again is about i think a tumultuous marriage yes it has to do with immigration and refugees and that is all fascinating to me but from my understanding it has that like literary level of like angst and sex and tumultuous marriage stuff that I don't love to read about. So I don't know. I can be convinced to read it because it's quite a popular beloved book, but at the same time, I'm not really compelled to read that. So I just, I don't know. These next two, I actually tried the first chapter of in a try a chapter video I did last year and I still have not read them. Everything is Illuminated by Jonathan Saffron Four and The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Stieg Larsson. So first talk about this one. This one is set in Ukraine. So like, I want to read it. I want to love it. This is one of my friend's favorite books. 
Also, this author, I loved his take on the slaughterhouse industry, a nonfiction hero, really well written. But I read the first chapter of this and I hated it. Like I wasn't really compelled, now looking back, especially completely not drawn to pick this up. And it's been over a year and I'm still not really interested to read it, but I also can be convinced. But this is a really weird book, weirdly put together and weird is also an anti-buzzword for me. Anything that is weird or strange, I'm like, no, I don't wanna read that. So again, I'm just not sure. And then The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo by Steve Larson. I also tried the first chapter and I just could not care, could not get into it. I've heard that it takes a little bit to get into this book that you need to give it like a hundred pages before you're compelled and pulled into the story. This has also been in my bag to get rid of for like a year. And every single time I reach for it, I'm like, no, I can't get rid of it. What if I still want to try it? What if I still want to try it? And I know so many people that love this series. Recently, Shelley Swearingen read this and loved it. And I'm like, well, if Shelly loves it, maybe I should give it a try. It's a thriller series that's set in Sweden, maybe, or something like that, and about an investigator. And there's some dark subject matter in here, but I heard it's a really good book and it's a three book series, but it has continued on. But the original trilogy, so many people love. So I wanna try it, but at the same time, I tried it. I tried a first chapter, which was a long chapter. And I was like, I'm so bored. I could care less. A book that was probably one of the first ones I have hauled since starting booktube, The Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett. This is on the list for like popular historical fictions. It is a almost thousand page book. It is hefty, chunky. This is like Bible thick. I've also heard mixed things. Some people say like it's good, it's solid, but like be careful, it's pretty brutal. And I'm like, okay, brutality doesn't really like scare me. I also don't know if I want to read a thousand page book about a building of a cathedral. It just sounds quite boring to me. This is just a lot to get into. It's also a trilogy. So like the story continues. I'm like, I don't really want to read three fat books that have to do with this, but a lot of people also love it. There's a reason it's very highly rated and at the top of like most popular historical fiction lists. And then lastly, I have three classics that I also for various reasons just am not drawn to. I've hauled them and I've not been wanting to pick them up at all. They've been in the bag to get rid of, but I can't make that final decision to just put it in a little free library. The first one I'll talk about is Dr. Zhivago by Boris Pasternak. I feel like I have to read a Russian classic because I'm Russian, so I probably should want to read this. But at the same time, War and Peace is sitting right there and I was supposed to read it this year and I probably won't. I have no desire to read it. And Dr. Zhivago, you know, a little bit more palatable. It's smaller, but at the same time, from what I've heard from people reading this, they don't love it. I read a historical fiction, The Secrets We Kept, that had to do with the Cold War and the creation of this book. And from my understanding, the heart of the story is an affair. It's about a man and his mistress. I don't want to read about that. Like that doesn't sound interesting to me. And I know that there's much more to it, but I just don't think I'm going to like it. So why would I force myself to read a book that I don't think I'm going to like? But it's a classic. So should I try it? I don't know. It's that dilemma. The next one is The Sun Also Rises by Ernest Hemingway. Now this is in general, not specifically this book, but this book because it's the only one I own by him, but I don't really wanna read an Ernest Hemingway. It's that like stream of consciousness, plotless, random. From what I've heard, he also was not a great person, like playboy, limited up in Paris, in like his little clique of people that all just like slept around and partied. I don't know, I'm just not compelled. Is Ernest Hemingway worth it? Is it worth to try? Maybe, again, this has been in that bag to get rid of for over a year and I just haven't pulled the plug to get rid of it because I'm like, should I try an Ernest Hemingway before I give up on him entirely? But I just really feel like I'm not gonna like it. So that's that's why I just don't know. And then finally, The Life of Pi by Jan Martel. Also not compelled to read this book at all. For some reason, the plot just does not sound interesting to me. I think when I originally hauled this, I thought that this was a magical like realism type of story and I don't think it is. I think it's actually about a boy with his family was transporting a bunch of zoo animals and the boat collapses and he's left alone on a boat with a tiger and it's their survival story, which I love survival stories, but I don't think that this is a fast paced one. I think this is like a slow, unpacking coming of age almost kind of book. And for some reason, I've just been not compelled to read it or pick it up whatsoever. I keep repeating myself. That's literally how I feel about all of these books. But this one especially, not that I've really heard anything negative about it, but I've just not been interested to read it. But I can be convinced. I know a lot of people love it too. So again, I just don't know. That's the theme of the video. I don't know. I don't know whether I should get rid of it, forget about them. And if one day I feel like I want to read them, I could just find them somewhere again. Or if I should really try them. I recently been enjoying some videos from Enter the Book about where she has a bunch of books on her TBR. She tries the first chapter of and the ones that she didn't connect with, she's just getting rid of. And I feel like I should try to do that with some books. So maybe I will with some of these after I hear some of your comments. So please let me know what you thought about any of those books. If you've read them, I would love to know. And 
thank you so much for watching this video about me rambling about why I still have not read these books and why they don't sound interesting to me but something about them still seems interesting enough to keep so that's that. I will see you guys in another video soon. Bye!